Good morning. Today we will be going over 6.6 6, graphing exponential functions. You guys will be able to describe and graph exponential functions. So recently, actually it's been a while, we have talked about linears or linear functions. And these are in the form y equals mx plus b. You'll notice below that an exponential has its own equation, okay? It does look quite a bit different. Um, they are in the form y equals a times b to the x. So these are exponentials. The main difference here, or one of the main differences, is that we have a exponent. Okay, that's why we just did our whole last chapter on dealing with exponents because we have more exponent stuff that we're going to start working with. Linears don't have an exponent. Okay, so exponential functions are defined by an equation in the form y equals a times b to the x. If b is greater than 1, the function is an exponential growth and increasing. So it will look like this. This is exponential growth. It is getting bigger as it goes to the right. That is if b is bigger than 1. So the base of the exponent. If b is a fraction between 0 and 1, the function is an exponential decay and is decreasing. So it looks like this. We have a new vocab word. It sounds kind of funny. It's called an asymptote. It's a line which the graph gets really close to but never ever touches or crosses. Okay. So we are going to start looking at some of these exponential growth or decay problems and graph them and decide some of these things about them, okay? Today, we are actually just going to create a table. So my table, I'm gonna plot quite a few points. So we have x, y. Guys, anytime you're not sure how to graph something, you can always try a table. A table will not let you down. Now, we are plugging the x values in for this exponent. Before we even start that, this 2 here is our base. It is our b, and we just learned that if b is bigger than 1, we know it is growth. So that 2 bigger than 1, we know this is growth before we even begin. All right, now we can continue on. I need to plug in to the x. So I have 2 to the power negative 2. Remember, negatives, they're unhappy where they are. You can go ahead and do this 2 to the second. That is 4, but since it is a negative second power, it becomes 1 over 4. These negative ones I'm thinking are the trickiest ones. Once we get to the normal numbers, you'll be fine. Then we plug in to the negative first power. So this becomes 1 over 2. Then we plug in to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is just 1. Kind of seeing why our exponent stuff comes in handy. The rest of these I'm going to do in my head. Actually, no, I lied. I'll write them out. 2 to the first is 2. 2 to the second is 4. And 2 to the third is 8. Okay, you could keep going if you wanted to, but we would run out of spots in our graph. So let's plot these points. These are just coordinates, okay? I know when you write them in a table, it doesn't necessarily look like a coordinate, but it is. We have the coordinate over negative 2, up 1 quarter. That is up just a teensy little bit. 
and negative one up one half, over zero up one, over one up two, over two, oops, I did that last one wrong, over one up two, over two up four, over three up eight. Now you'll notice this does not create a straight line. That is true. Remember, it looks like these curves that we saw above, we can draw this in. Now, we also talked about the asymptote. It's a line that it gets really, really, really close to, but never touches. In this case, that line is the x-axis. It is never going to touch the x-axis if I continue to plug in say like two to the negative 100th power. Uh, well, maybe not go that big. Let's go two to the negative 10th power. 100th would still work, but it'll look crazy. It already looks crazy here. Let's even make it a little smaller. These are just really, really small numbers, but you will never get past zero, okay? Even that 10th that I was talking about, we just learned about scientific notation. This is really 0. 0.000, maybe I can't move that, let's try over here, 0. 0.00976562525. This is not smaller than zero, it's not a negative number, so it's still not touching the x-axis, okay? So we talk about domain and range. It's been a minute. Domain is our x values. We want to see how far the graph stretches from left to right. And even though it looks like this is continuing straight up, it will actually continue to get more and more numbers out this way. So the domain is actually all real numbers. And your range here is where your asymptote is. So our y values, we have no smaller y values than zero. Actually, it doesn't even touch zero. So our range is y values greater than zero. Because remember, range is y values. Our y-intercept, you're just looking when x is equal to zero. So you find this point here. The y-intercept is at zero, one can also look on our graph. And then the asymptote and the range value, that y greater than zero, usually match up, if not always. It is the horizontal line y equals zero, otherwise known as the x-axis. Okay, so that was a quick run through. We're actually gonna skip down to three. We're gonna try another one because a couple things change. Not really a ton of stuff, but the thing that changes is the fact that we have this negative one here. So we need to discuss, what does that do for us? So, we can create ourselves a table. So we have negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, We'll see if we need all of these. Sometimes they might get off the graph, in which case we can't use them. You can, but it'd be harder to graph. What you can actually do, guys, is you can use your calculator. If you need 3 to the negative second power minus 1, you can do this in your head. This is 1 ninth minus 1. Um, but a lot of us don't like working with fractions. It can feel a little tricky. I know this is going to be negative 8 over 9. You might not know that. So if you just pull up your calculator, get out your calculator, and you type this in exactly as it shows with parentheses, remember that's important. You have, oops, let me get rid of this. You have 3 to the negative second power, arrow over, and subtract 1. Okay, so we're going to round that. That is negative 0.89. OK, 
okay? So make sure when you're typing these into your calculator that you are very thorough or just solve them by hand. So now, if you have scientific Desmos up, you can actually, and actually in your real calculator that I gave you guys, you can just replace this without retyping everything and you get negative 0.66 or 0.67 if you round. Anything to the zero power, actually anything to the zero power is a one, but then you do have to subtract the one. So it might just be easier if you once again come up here and you do the solving in your calculator, you get one minus one, that is zero. That is what we got in our calculator. Just keep flipping back and forth. You get two when you plug in one for your exponent. You get eight when you plug in two for your exponent. And I think this next one will be pretty far off our graph, but we'll check it. Yeah, 26. So it keeps increasing a lot. That one won't be able to go on a graph, but I'll go ahead and write it down there. So guys, all I did is I plugged this in to my calculator and changed out the x here. You can do that on either your scientific calculator or on Desmos. I can show you if you need help at some point. Anyway, let's go ahead and graph this. We have the point negative 2, negative 0.89, negative 1, negative 0.67, 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 8, and then I would go off my graph. Now I want you guys to notice something. This, once again, is growth. Okay, because this B value here is bigger than 1. Our domain, once again, is all real numbers, the x values will eventually cover every single one. It'll go from left to right forever. Our range this time is different. It is not y is greater than zero, but instead it is y is greater than negative one. If you look here, these values will never touch this horizontal negative one. Here's the thing I wanted you to notice. This value here is negative one. If we go back to the problem we did above, there is no plus or minus, it is a zero. So guys, this right here tells you your range. It also tells you your asymptote. So whatever the plus or minus number is there, it will clue you in to where your asymptote will be. So since on this problem, y is greater than negative 1 for our range, that means our asymptote is y equals negative 1. Those two are connected. And then our y-intercept, you just look when x is 0 or at the graph where it is across that x-axis, and then this point, it is 0, 0. All right, let's move right along. We're going to look at four. We can create ourselves a table. Once again, I would highly suggest doing the solving of this one on a calculator. I'm going to plug in negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Before we even get started with that, though, I want to fill out as much of my information on the right side as I can. Because you can. Without even graphing it, you know these things, most of them. Because our b value, the base of our exponent term, is a fraction between 0 and 1, this is going to be decay. So it's going to look a little different than what we've seen. Our domain will end up being all real numbers. 
you should see a pattern there. Our range, if we look at the plus or minus number here behind, it is a plus four. So our y values will be greater than four. And our asymptote matches up. It means that y will equal four. So we are going to have an asymptote line here that the graph will never, ever, ever cross. So let's actually plug in the points. Let's flip to Desmos, get ourselves a new problem. We have one third. Oops. To the negative second. And then we have plus four. So this is 13. When I plug in negative two, I get 13. Once again, you can do this on paper if you want. One third to the negative second means that this goes to both the top and the bottom. So we would end up with nine over one plus four, which is 13. As long as you throw though, calculators work well. Plug in the exponent of negative one, you get seven. Zero, hopefully you can guess it, you should get five, because anything to the zero power is one, plus four is five. We go to the first power, you get 4.3 repeating, and then the second power You get 4.1 repeating. And hopefully you guys see a pattern here. Like we already saw, it's going to get really close to 4, but never cross that line. So let's plot these points. We have negative 2, 13. That's somewhere up here. We'll just guess. Negative 1, 7. We have 0, 5, which that is the last thing we didn't know. Our y-intercept is over 0, up 5. Over 1, up 4.3. Over 2, up 4.1. It's going to get really, really close to this line, but never touch our asymptote of 4. All right, guys, I'm also going to show you in our graphing calculator here. Can you do it like this? No. So we have y equals one third. It'll graph as you go to, so don't freak out, to the x plus four. This looks exactly like our graph. And if you zoom in or zoom out, you'll notice that it never, ever, ever touches the four, or crosses it. And it will ever so slowly continue out. It would, if you zoomed out enough, eventually touch all real numbers. As hard as that is to believe, it would happen. Okay? So you can also check your work on Desmos if you would like graphing. We're going to do one more together because 6 throws in this multiply by 5 here. That just makes our solving a tad bit trickier, but everything else is still pretty much the same. You look at the specific base, okay? This is a fraction. It is underneath the exponent, so it is going to be decay. Our domain, like all of the rest of these, is all real numbers. Our range, if you look at what is being, in this case, subtracted, is going to be y values greater than negative 3, which means our asymptote will also be at negative 3. Our y-intercept is the only thing that we need to figure out. So we are never going to cross or touch this line here at negative 3. So we're going to make ourselves a table. We have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I always just use those numbers 
Uh, eventually, there'll come a day where we'll have to use different ones for a different type of problem, but they are pretty solid for most cases. So I have 5 times 1 half to the power, we're going to say negative 2, and then we have minus 3. So that is going to be 17. Now, thankfully, no matter what calculator you have, you can actually just go back in and change this out. All you have to do is arrow up on yours. We have 7. Then we switch it over to 0. This is going to be 2. Because 5 minus 3 is 2. Plug in 1. We get negative 0.5. We plug in 2. We might have to do a couple more. We get negative 0.75. Ooh, sorry, negative 1.75. Notice we think it needs to go all the way to negative 3, so let's plug in at least 3 and see where that takes us. That gives us negative 2.375. I'll just round it to negative 2.4 for our application. It's hard to graph any better. Let's see if we plug in 4 for x. I'm just going further because they think I know what the asymptote should be, but we didn't get there yet. So I'm going to make sure. Okay, 4 gives us that. I'm going to not write anymore. 5 gives us that. 6, so we are getting closer and closer to negative 3, but never crossing it, so that's a good sign. 8, 9, 10. Okay, so 10. We'll keep going, but this gets closer and closer to negative 3. So I'm just going to say, like, to the 11th power is negative two point, I mean, if I round it, it would round up to three, but it's never actually going to touch it. So maybe I'll go back a couple. We'll say to the eighth is negative 2.98. To the eighth is negative 2.98, which is good. We already thought our asymptote was at negative three. Looks like it is. Let's graph it. The negative two up 17, we can't really graph. Negative one up seven, we can though. 0 up 2, that's our y-intercept, over 0 up 2, this guy right here. Then we have 1, negative 0.5, 2, negative 1.75, 3, negative 2.4, 8, we skip down, negative 2.98, so we have an exponential graph here. Never touches the asymptote. Doesn't cross it either. I know it's kind of hard to draw. Looks like mine does cross, but just do your best. Okay, so with the help of a calculator and being able to dissect the equation, hopefully these aren't too bad. We'll talk about that a little more tomorrow, but make sure you have this written on your notes. Have a great day.